Hello comparison test viewers and welcome back to another all cars everyday video. I'm standing here with the 2021 Kia Telluride which Kia dealers have been struggling to keep on their lots. They're very popular. In today's comparison test it's going to be taking on some of its top competitors. This is the 2021 Hyundai Palisade. It's Kia's most successful three row crossover ever and it's also a direct cousin to the Kia Telluride. Here's another huge player in the three row SUV segment, the 2021 Honda Pilot. And finally, here's the 2020 Toyota Highlander, which like some of the other competitors in this comparison, was redesigned last year. I'm comparing these four SUVs in seven different categories and declaring an advantage to a particular SUV in each of those categories. Furthermore, I'm comparing the SUVs at a certain trim level without adding any options or packages to that trim level to keep the comparison as fair as possible. So more specifically, I'm comparing the limited versions of the Highlander and Palisade, the SX version of the Kia Telluride, and the touring version of the Honda Pilot. With that out of the way, let's look at our first area of evaluation, which is going to be value. In this category, we take a look at the MSRP of each vehicle and then look at the standard features offered for that price. The 2021 Kia Telluride SX has an MSRP of $44,090 when equipped with no additional features besides the $1,900 all-wheel drive system. It's got the least expensive MSRP in test by $1,225. On the exterior of the vehicle, the mirrors are decked out with a power folding feature and reverse gear tilt down, as well as being heated, a good feature in the winter. Lighting is exclusively LED on the SX trim, coming with LED daytime running lights, headlights, fog lights, and tail lights. There are also orange LED positioning lights that are a Telluride signature at this point. Out back, there is a power tailgate that can be activated by just standing behind the hatch with the smart key in your pocket. Speaking of that smart key, it can get you into and out of the vehicle without ever having to use the fob. Up top, the Kia has roof rails, and the biggest Kia also rides on 20-inch black sport finished machined wheels. The SX model also has satin chrome trim pieces, sprinkled throughout various points on the exterior. Step into the inside and you will find a leather appointed interior. Both front seats are heated, important for climates with harsh winters, but they're also ventilated, which cools you off in the summer. The driver gets 12 ways of power adjustment, including two-way lumbar support. The passenger also gets eight ways of adjustment. Technology in the Telluride is centered around two display screens, the 10 and a quarter inch infotainment screen atop the dash, and the seven inch color TFT display called Supervision that sits in the middle of the gauge cluster. Supervision serves as the driver information center and can be configured to display a secondary speedometer, outside temperature, fuel range, and more. Supervision also displays a live feed of the blind spots from the cameras mounted on the rear view mirrors of the vehicle when the turn signal is activated, called blind view monitor. The infotainment screen is where you can access Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, the navigation system, Bluetooth, and the Sirius XM trial subscription. That audio playing capability goes through the Telluride SX's Harman Kardon 10 speaker audio system, which includes an external amplifier and subwoofer. The Kia is loaded with convenience features. Included are an auto dimming rear view mirror with home link, push button and remote start, an electronic parking brake, and dual zone automatic climate control with rear passenger climate controls. Places to plug in are plentiful with six total USB charge ports, three traditional 12 volt outlets, and a wireless charging pad for phones with that capability. Other nice features to have include 64 different interior lighting colors, a two position memory system that has settings for the driver's seat and mirrors, and two sunroofs. The front is powered, the rear is fixed. If sunlight isn't your vibe, second row passengers have sunshades for the windows. Front windows have a one touch up and down feature. Rounding out the last features on the interior of the Kia are a surround view parking camera that gives you a bird's eye view of the Telluride, second row captain's chairs that are one touch sliding and folding, and driver talk, which is a system that amplifies the driver's voice to the rear seat passengers in case the answer to all the are we there yet's needs a little more emphasis. Hey, be quiet back there. Finally, owners can download an app called Uvo on their smart devices that allows them to control a car remotely with features to lock, unlock, start, and track their Telluride virtually. This service is free for a year, then turns into a subscription service from there. The 2021 Hyundai Palisade Limited All-Wheel Drive has an MSRP of $46,825, which is the most expensive in test. That said, the Palisade does offer more features standard versus the competition, but it's up to you to decide whether it's worth the extra cash. Let's get right into it. Exterior lighting is LED all around, including the headlights, taillights, accent lighting, and daytime running lights. The side view mirrors are heated, and the tailgate is power 
operated with the same hands-free feature as the Kia. Up top there are roof rails, and the Palisade also has rain-sensing windshield wipers that turn on automatically when it can tell it's raining outside. Other features dress up the exterior, like the variety of satin chrome trim pieces scattered about, and the 20-inch alloy wheels. Getting into the vehicle is easy with the smart proximity key that can automatically lock or unlock the Palisade when the owner approaches, like all vehicles in this test. The interior is premium Napa leather appointed, some of the nicest in the segment. The driver's seat has 12 ways of power adjustment, including four ways of power lumbar support. The passenger gets eight ways of power adjustment, but both front seats are heated and ventilated, as seen in three of the four in this test. Even the second row captain's chairs are both heated and ventilated. Ventilation in the second row is something that separates the Palisade from the competition. Technology in the Palisade is slightly different than in the Kia, coming with the same 10 and a quarter inch infotainment screen in the dash, but a 12.3 inch fully digital color LCD display that serves as the instrument cluster. This advanced display is reconfigurable to show what the driver prefers, but has permanent fuel and speedometer gauges on the left and a permanent tack and temperature gauge on the right. In the middle part of the screen is the driver information center that can display active safety, audio settings, and other key vehicle information. This is also where the blind spot monitor is displayed, which is the same feature seen in the gauge cluster of the Kia that we talked about earlier. Like the ventilated second row seats, the fully digital gauge cluster is not something seen in the competition. Let's go back to the infotainment screen, which has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, as well as Bluetooth, Series XM, and navigation. Playing audio through the system will be routed to the 630 watt audio system with 12 speakers and Quantum Logic surround sound. It's a fantastic audio system. Convenience features in the Palisade are lengthy, coming with a heated steering wheel, a dual panel sunroof, push button start, and 64 interior lighting colors. The Palisade has an app called Blue Link that allows owners remote access to the SUV via their smart device, with similar features to the Kia and other manufacturers' remote connectivity apps. It's free for three years, then is on a subscription basis afterwards. The driver's seat has a memory feature for two drivers, and the second row bench is replaced with captain's chairs that can slide or be folded with the push of a button. The third row is fully power folding as well, which is something that's unique to the Palisade in this comparison. Speaking of the third row, the driver talk system can amplify the driver's voices to the rear seats through the speakers. The Hyundai also has a bird's eye view camera of the vehicle called the surround monitor, similar to what we saw in the Kia. But the Hyundai also has a heads up display that projects key vehicle information virtually near the bottom of the windshield. There's a dual zone automatic climate control system and the second row also gets their own climate controls. The rear view mirror dims automatically when it detects bright headlights and the Homelink universal transceiver is mounted on the bottom of that mirror. There are a lot of places to plug in in the Palisade including three USBs in the first row, two in both rear rows, a traditional 12-volt outlet, a 115-volt house-style outlet, and even a wireless charging pad. It would take actual talent for your phone to run out of juice in this SUV. The 2021 Honda Pilot Touring with all-wheel drive has an MSRP of $45,315. Exterior features include LED lighting all around, the headlights, taillights, fog lights, and DRLs are all of that variety. The side view mirrors are heated and also tilt down for better visibility when in reverse. There are roof rails up top, and the tailgate is a hands-free power unit. For the Honda, a simple kick under the middle of the rear bumper with the fob on your person will open it up. Wheels on the Honda are 20 inches in diameter with a machined alloy finish. Besides some chrome scattered here and there, the Honda's final exterior feature is the smart entry with walkway auto lock feature that doesn't require the use of a fob or the push of any buttons on the door handle to lock or unlock the car, which is something that other vehicles typically rely on. Use that system to get inside and you will find a leather trimmed interior basking in light coming from the one touch power moonroof. The driver's seat is 10 way power adjustable with power lumbar support and it has a memory function for two people that will store both the seat and mirror positions depending on which fob is being used to start the SUV. The front passenger gets four ways of power adjustment, but both front seats are heated. The second row isn't chopped liver though, as the outboard seats in the touring trim are also heated. Technology in the Pilot can be found in three primary locations, all of which are screens. The first is the seven inch LCD unit in the middle of the gauge cluster. It displays reconfigurable bits of key information, including fuel range, outside temperature, audio settings, the speedometer, and more. On its flank, are an analog fuel gauge and temperature gauge. In the center of the dashboard is the Pilot's 8-inch color touchscreen display that houses Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth, Sirius XM, and voice-activated navigation. It's tilted too far upwards and as a result seems to wash out in sunlight pretty easily. This system plays music through the Pilot's 590-watt 10-speaker audio system that includes a subwoofer. The third and final screen that's important in the touring trim is the 10.2-inch high-resolution entertainment screen intended for the rear rows. It has an HDMI input, Blu-ray capability, and built-in streaming apps to satiate the inevitable media consumption that will happen in the rear rows. 
Convenience features on the Honda include a tri-zone automatic climate control system that affords the rear row its own zone and controls. Only one other vehicle has a tri-zone system in test. Also included are a Homelink Universal Transceiver, an auto dimming rearview mirror, express front windows, push button start, and Wi-Fi. In the second row, there are sunshades for the windows, and that row has one touch sliding seats, though they require a pull of a handle to fold. Though the button redundancy of the other vehicles seems nice when it comes to available options to slide or fold the seats, the pilot's limited use of buttons, handles, and straps make it easier to identify exactly what seat will be moving in what manner. I did find myself getting a little confused on other vehicles as to what row would be moving in what fashion, though I'm sure a few weeks of ownership would resolve this in the other vehicles. The pilot also has Honda Link, Honda's version of the remote connectivity app. The connectivity portion is free for three months, the rest of Honda Link is free for a year. Like most other manufacturers, it's a subscription service afterwards. You can plug in in many places in the pilot, with three USB charging ports, three 12 volt outlets, and a 100 15 volt house style outlet. It has a system to amplify the front passenger's voices to the rear seat called cabin talk, but it also has a system called cabin control that allows rear passengers remote control over some of the features in the car through an app on their smartphone. They can send destinations to the navigation, change the music, rear entertainment system, and rear climate control through the app. It's up to parents to decide whether this proves useful or annoying, but for the record, it's the only of its kind in test. The 2020 Toyota Highlander Limited All Wheel Drive has an MSRP of $45,600 which is mid-pack for the segment. On the outside of the car, there are LED headlights, taillights, fog lights, and daytime running lights standard. There are also 20-inch chrome wheels, a hands-free power liftgate, and side view mirrors that are heated and tilt down when the driver engages reverse. It knows when the owner is approaching because it has a smart key system like the others. Finally, the backup camera has its own washer, lest the elements get the best of the lens. If you enter the 2020 Highlander, you'll find leather on the heated steering wheel and the first two rows of seating. The driver's seat has a memory function included and both front seats are heated and ventilated as well. The front chairs are also power adjustable. 10 ways for the driver with power lumbar and four ways for the passenger. Let's check out the technology in the new Highlander. The gauge cluster retains two analog gauges for the speedometer and tachometer, but the LCD screen for the driver information center grows to seven inches from its smaller design last year. The head unit also gets a pretty big upgrade over last year, growing to 8 inches. On it, there's Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and Amazon Alexa. It's also got a 4G LTE Wi-Fi plan and Sirius XM, both of which are on a subscription basis. The limited trim also has navigation and voice-activated controls for the infotainment system. That's not to be confused with EasySpeak, which is a system that amplifies the front occupant's voices to the third row for easier hearing, a system found in all four vehicles. If you use the Bluetooth or any of the other countless ways to connect your phone to a modern car, you can play music through the Highlander Limited's JBL audio system that has 11 speakers, including both a sub and amplifier. Those of you who know the channel well know that I don't claim to be a great judge of premium audio systems because they all sound great to me. Regardless, know that the Highlander has a good one. Finally, let's take a look at the Highlander's convenience features. Up front, there's a Homelink Universal Transceiver, push button start, a wireless phone charger, an auto dimming rear view mirror, and a power sunroof. Rear passengers benefit from the tri-zone automatic climate control and sunshades for the windows in the second row. There's also remote access to the Highlander available through an app just like the others. The trial period is six months. There are lots of places to plug in devices in the Highlander, which include four USB ports and two 12 volt outlets, as well as one traditional 120 volt house outlet. In this category, standout important features are found mostly in the Korean vehicles. The Honda is the only to have the rear seat entertainment, and the Highlander certainly covers the bases. But I think it's the Kia that offers the best features for the money. The Palisade has the heads up display, a power third row, Napa leather, and heated and ventilated rear seats, just to mention a few standout features. But are those worth essentially $2,700? because that's the price difference between it and the Kia. For some they might be, but I think the Kia still has the advantage as it makes a better value proposition, covering the necessary bases while still offering some of its own unique features. In this category, we take a look at the standard active safety technology of each vehicle, as well as reviewing the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety's passive crash test results. The 2021 Telluride has a lot of active safety features standard. Included are automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection, forward collision warning, blind spot detection, lane keeping assist with departure warning, lane following assist, highway drive assist, rear cross traffic collision avoidance assist, driver attention warning, and parking distance warnings both in the front and rear. The Telluride also has safe exit assist, which scans oncoming traffic from the rear when the car is parallel parked so passengers can't step out into moving traffic. 
Rear occupant alert reminds you of passengers in the back seat, lest you forget them, and will even send a push notification to your smart device equipped with the Kia Uvo app if it detects you've left a child back there. The Telluride is rated highly by the IIHS as a 2020 top safety pick. It got the highest rating of good in every category, except the ease of use on the child seat anchors, which was rated acceptable, and the headlights, which ranged from poor to acceptable. The 2021 Palisade is also stuffed with active safety features in an attempt to prevent passengers in the event of a collision. It has blind spot collision avoidance assist, rear cross traffic collision avoidance, a parking distance warning system in both the front and rear, forward collision avoidance with pedestrian detection, lane following and keeping assist, driver attention warning, and highway drive assist that adds on to smart cruise control with stop and go. If that's not enough, it also has ultrasonic rear occupant alert that has the same features as the Kia, though it can also measure movement of the child. Safe exit assist is found here as well. The Palisade was rated highly from the IIHS as a top safety pick. It was rated the highest rating of good everywhere except headlights, which had a range from marginal to good, and the ease of use for the child's seat anchors, which was rated acceptable. The 2021 Honda Pilot aims to keep its passengers safe as well, coming with a collision mitigation braking system, a road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, a blind spot information system with a cross traffic monitor, and automatic high beams. It was rated the highest score of good everywhere in IIHS testing except the small overlap on the passenger side and the ease of use for the child's seat anchors, which were rated acceptable, and the headlights, which ranged from acceptable to good. Last but not least is the Highlander, coming standard with dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alert with steering assist, a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection, lane tracing assist, auto high beams, road sign assist and cyclist detection, blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, and front and rear parking assist with automated braking. The Highlander is also an IIHS top safety pick like the Koreans. I bet Honda will join the ranks whenever the updated pilot comes out. The Highlander got good everywhere except headlights, which had a range from poor to good. For safety, both the Telluride Ride and Palisade score the advantage, as they have nearly identical active safety features and IIHS ratings. All four are exceedingly safe vehicles, however, and remember that the Toyota was also rated a top safety pick. The Telluride has a 3.8 liter V6 with 291 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque, all routed through an 8-speed automatic transmission with the ability to manually change the gears using the shifter. The Tele has four drive modes, which are Comfort, Eco, Sport, and Smart. Pop it into Sport, and the Telluride will speed to 60 miles per hour in 7.2 seconds. The Kia also has active, on-demand, lockable all-wheel drive with a snow mode. The Palisade has the same corporate Lambda 3.8 liter V6 that makes the same 291 horsepower and the same 262 pound-feet of twist. Power is routed through the same 8-speed automatic transmission to all four wheels. You can lock the Hyundai into all-wheel drive, and that system also brings a snow drive mode. Speaking of which, the Hyundai comes with Comfort, Eco, Sport, and Smart drive modes with paddle shifters should you feel like you want to change the character of the Palisade's drive style. From a standstill, this powertrain can propel the Palisade to 60 miles per hour in 7.2 seconds, just like the Kia. The Pilot comes with Honda's 280 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque, 3.5 liter V6 engine. It has idle stop and variable cylinder management, both of which are aimed at increasing the fuel economy of the vehicle. Idle stop turns off the engine temporarily when sitting in traffic or waiting at a stoplight, and variable cylinder management can shut down half the pistons in the engine under light loads. The Honda doesn't have a true four-wheel drive system like a couple other competitors that are not in this test, but it does have a very good all-wheel drive system called IVTM4, which essentially means that the system can redistribute torque to the front or rear of the car, as well as a certain side of the vehicle. It all aids in the pilot's maneuverability in inclement conditions, especially when paired with the pilot's snow, sand, and mud traction management system. The engine puts power to the ground through a 9-speed automatic transmission with paddle shifters behind the steering wheel. In previous years of this generation pilot, I've heard pretty bad comments about the day-to-day -day driving character and reliability of the 9-speed transmission, enough that people would choose the lower trim levels just to get the 6-speed. And for 2021, the only transmission choice is that 9-speed. However, Honda has since revised the transmission software and programming. Without a long-term test drive, I can attest if they fixed its issues. Just be wary of this information. That being said, the pilot is the speed demon of the group, requiring only 6.3 seconds to reach 60 miles per hour. The Highlander comes with a carryover 3.5 liter V6 with 295 horsepower and 263 pound-feet of torque. The engine has been modernized with an automatic stop-start system and routes power through an 8-speed automatic and dynamic torque vectoring all-wheel drive. The all-wheel drive system isn't quite as stellar as the Honda's, but can still redistribute torque to certain sides of the vehicle. It's also got multiple terrain settings for the throttle response. 0 to 60 takes about 7.2 seconds, as it does in the Koreans. Though I have expressed concerns over the Honda's 9-speed auto, it has a superior engine 
engine, all-wheel drive system, and it's faster than the competition. Because of that, it gets the advantage in powertrain and performance. In this category, we take a look at how efficient those powertrains are by looking at their miles per gallon, their average fuel range, and their yearly fuel cost. Both the Telluride and Palisade get 19 miles per gallon of gas in the city and 24 on the highway for 21 mpg combined. Given their fuel tank size, that's good for a 395 mile fuel range using the combined rating. The Pilot is a little thirstier in the city, getting 19 mpg, but makes up for that on the highway with 26 for the same 21 combined. Fuel range in the Honda is 429 miles. The Toyota is the miser of the group, achieving 20 in the city and 27 on the highway for 23 combined. Fuel range in the Highlander is 411 miles. Assuming 15,000 miles are driven annually and gas is at 222 a gallon, the Koreans would cost 1,586 a year to fuel to the Pilot's 1,514 and the Highlander's 1,448. The Toyota gets the advantage in fuel economy as it has the highest combined MPG rating, the second highest fuel range, and it's the cheapest to keep filled up over the course of a year. In this category, I take a look at the projected reliability of each vehicle as predicted by Consumer Reports. They extensively test every new vehicle for sale and use historical data to try and accurately forecast new car reliability. They rate each vehicle on a scale from much worse than average to much better than average. The Kia, Hyundai, and Toyota are all rated better than average, the second highest designation. The Pilot fares pretty well too, with average. In this category, we have a three-way tie for the advantage between the Koreans and Toyota. According to Consumer Reports, they will let you down the least. Functionality is where I wrap up the loose ends of the comparison and include important buying factors that are relevant to purchasing these vehicles, but don't fit into other categories, such as interior dimensions, warranty, and cargo capacity. The Kia and Hyundai both have a 5-year, 60,000-mile general warranty, compared to the Toyota and Honda's 3-year, 36,000-mile warranty. The powertrain warranty is the same deal, with the Koreans coming with a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty, to the Japanese vehicle's 5-year, 60,000-mile warranty. As for seating, the Hyundai and Kia have 7 passenger seating with those second row captain's chairs. To get 8 passenger seating, you'll have to opt for a lower trim level. The Honda and Toyota both have 7 passenger seating as well, but you can choose to keep the second row bench at no extra cost. All 4 SUVs can tow a maximum of 5,000 pounds. As for cargo space, the Telluride has the most with 21 cubic feet in the cargo hold, 46 with the third row down, and 87 with both rear rows down. The Palisade is next with 18 in the cargo hold and 45.8 with the third row down, which expands to 86.4 with both rows down. Next is the Highlander with 16 in the cargo hold, 48.4 with the third row down, which is actually more than the Koreans, and then 84.3 with all rows down. The Pilot has 16 and a half in the cargo hold, 46.8 with the third row down, and 83.8 with both rows folded flat. For headroom, the only real difference between the four is that the Pilot has the most third row headroom at 38.9 inches where the Highlander has the least at 36.1. When it comes to shoulder room, the Toyota, Kia, and Hyundai all hover around 55 inches in the third row to the Honda's 44.6, which is noticeably more cramped for three people. Finally, second row legroom is the smallest in the Honda at 38.4, whereas the others vary from 41 to 42. Rear seat legroom is actually biggest in the Pilot, though, at 31.9. The Koreans are close with 31.4, but the Highlander is lacking here with 27.7. In this category, dimensionally all three are relatively close, but the Koreans were packaged better, offering close to class leading cargo capacity and nearing the top of the rankings for interior dimensions. This, coupled with the fact that they offer an industry leading warranty, secures the advantage. The Kia was dimensionally bigger in most categories, so the final advantage in this category will go to that SUV, but the Hyundai is right behind it. In this category, I do a light design analysis of the vehicles from my point of view. Of course, this category is completely subjective, so feel free to substitute in your own opinions as I go through what I think looks good and what could use work. The Telluride is probably the most ubiquitous vehicle on this channel. It's been in so many comparisons against various competitors that those of you who know my channel well already know how I feel about its styling. I think it is one of the boldest in its class, and as I have mentioned before, it is a machismo, truck-like look. This is what I picture a Ram SUV would look like, especially from the front, where there's a large grille. Between that and the headlights that are set very far outboard, the front of the SUV has a visual width and road presence few can match. The rest of the vehicle seems to draw from styling inspired by Land Rover. I seriously think that given a few additional luxury trim pieces like headlights, taillights, and mirrors, you could slap a Range Rover badge on it and most people wouldn't know any better. I don't think there's a bad angle on the whole car, but I will admit the rear doesn't match the front as well as it could. The rear 
is visually narrower. I would have loved the taillights to extend their horizontal piece to add to the width. The Palisade is a great design and very in line with other current Hyundai products like the Venue, Kona, and Santa Fe. The common theme of those Hyundai SUVs are the thin running lights up top with the true headlights mounted lower in the front fascia. I used to dislike this style of lighting as seen in the previous Jeep Cherokee and Nissan Juke. I couldn't stand them actually. Somehow Hyundai has done them better and I think it works well on all Hyundai products except maybe the Kona. The rear of the Palisade is good looking as well and I think the bottom part of the bumper takes hints from German SUVs. The lights are pretty unique too with that bright piece inwards of the actual light itself. The Pilot was a radical departure from the old model when when this current design came around in 2016, but now it's starting to look a little dated compared to almost every other offering. In fact, it looks very similar to the 2016 Nissan Pathfinder. The Pilot is due for a huge update soon, and it needs to be brought in line with the rest of Honda's lineup, which is pretty homogenous, save for the Pilot and HRV. The front is very plain and somewhat uninspiring. The rear is plain as well, but has stood the test of time better than the front. It's the least luxurious looking vehicle here, but even still, the rear writes a check the front can't cash. The Highlander is an evolutionary design of the strong selling previous model. Despite that, I think the styling has been taken up market slightly. The front of the vehicle is relatively inoffensive, which is perfect for a mass production SUV, but the rear is clearly drawing elements from Lexus design. In fact, the rear sheet metal cut lines and taillights look more like a Lexus to me than a Toyota. It starts with that very prominent cut line that begins in the front door and arches up over the wheel well, making the Highlander give off a sporty rear wheel drive presence despite the fact that it cannot be had in just rear wheel drive. When it comes to interiors, the Telluride's is just as good as its exterior and the solid straight dashboard line aligns well with the visual width theme of the front of the vehicle. The way the transmission tunnel is designed is great too, with the flying buttresses rising toward the climate control. Screen placement is iffy, I think the standalone screen is fine in this application, but other people think it sticks out like a sore thumb. Speaking of sore thumb, I can't stand the steering wheel, which is the only piece that brings the interior down. Otherwise, it's near the top of the class. The interior in the Palisade is a fine place to be, but is not as attractive as the exterior, maybe because it sacrifices some style for usable space. The transmission tunnel is easy to use and understand, and it's also well within the driver's reach, but it looks out of place in an otherwise well-styled interior. Under it is a huge space for various trinkets though, so it may be a good compromise. The steering wheel is great, as opposed to its corporate cousin, and the fully digital gauge cluster adds to the experience. The infotainment screen takes a different approach from the Kia that I like a little less, but some people may prefer that it has some integration into the dashboard. The interior of the Pilot fares better than the exterior, and I like the steering wheel, gauge cluster, and transmission tunnel. However, the climate control and screen and vent placement need a big update. Once again, even of the areas that I like, they look less expensive than almost all other competitors. And though these are not luxury vehicles, they're pushing 50 grand. Other manufacturers have been able to infuse some premium aspects into their interior for this price. Honda has not yet. The interior of the Highlander is the busiest, and I think it's the most in-your-face of the four. The two-tone dash is cool, but the positively massive screen and climate control system is positioned weird relative to the steering wheel and any other vehicle I can think of. The steering wheel is fine and the transmission tunnel is actually very good looking, especially the shifter. I would love to see this interior with a more traditional screen and climate control system. There is a nice shelf beneath that combo, but I don't think that shelf is worth making the infotainment system so compromised. Despite pretty cool styling from most of these SUVs, it's going to take a lot for someone to dethrone the Kia's exterior and interior styling in my eyes. To me, it has completely redefined the segment in that way. It's just a bonus that the SUV also happens to be a very solid offering in the other categories. Strong advantage to the Telluride for me in this category. I truthfully can't declare a winner of this comparison, because that would imply that there is a loser, and that could not be farther from the truth. Even the oldest vehicle here, the Honda, is somehow still a very competitive offering, despite the fact that all three of the other competitors were brand new designs for 2020. Whichever vehicle you pick, I can nearly guarantee your satisfaction. However, were it my money, I would go with the Telluride based on its styling and value proposition. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy this comparison, feel free to leave a like. Otherwise, have a great day.